Hey, what's up guys? My name is Connor. Today, guys, I'm gonna be helping you guys decide whether or not to buy the Corsair H100i version two. Now, this is going to be split up into two videos. Part one, which is going to be the installation of the liquid cooler, and part two, which is going to be a full review, including benchmarks, my opinion of it, some temperatures, and a few other things. Now, starting off with part one, the installation. First, get the water cooler itself. On the box, you can find some pretty useful information that you can actually all find on Corsair's website. I'll leave a link down in the description. When you first open the box, is the liquid cooler itself, along with eight long screws used for mounting the fans to the radiator, four LGA 115 standoff screws, four LGA 2011 standoff screws and four AMD black standoff screws. Also included are four thumb screws, two static pressure 120 millimeter fans, 16 washers, one Intel backplate, one Intel mounting bracket, which is already installed on the CPU cooler itself. And also included are the Corsair link cable, eight short screws for mounting the radiator directly to the case, and one AMD mounting bracket. First thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to take the mounting bracket and put it on the back of the motherboard. Also when lining this up you want to make sure the thicker part is going vertical and the very thin part is going horizontal. Now there are two standoffs that are very similar. One is black and one is gray. You want to take the gray ones, which are the LGA-115 standoff screws. If you're using AMD, you're going to go ahead and take the black ones and use the mounting plate that came with your motherboard. And you're going to go ahead and screw in each corner, holding the back of the back plate so it doesn't fall back through the motherboard. Next, I'm going to go ahead and apply some thermal paste to the CPU. The water block comes pre-applied with thermal paste, but if for some reason yours does not have thermal paste on it, you're going to need to buy some. Next up, you want to grab the four thumb screws and the water cooler. Attaching the water block can be very difficult, so I recommend having someone help you by holding it in place so you can screw in the four thumb screws. When screwing in the thumb screws, you're going to want to go from corner to corner in an X shape. So start at one of the top corners and hand tighten that. And you just want to go to each of the screws and make sure they're tight. Make sure all of them are hand tightened. You don't want to tighten them with a screwdriver because you don't want to over tighten them and risk damaging your CPU. Next up is probably my least favorite part, which is mounting the radiator. I find mounting the radiator probably the hardest part of the entire build. And there are two different ways you can install the radiator. The first way is attaching the radiator directly to the PC case. In that case, you would use the small screws and use the fans as a pull method, which would be pulling the air through the radiator or you can go with the second way which is what I'm going to be doing and that is putting the case fans against the PC case and then the radiator. This allows for the fans to blow air through the radiator and I find this to be more effective. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take one long screw and put that screw through one of the very bottom holes. After you've tightened it up a bit, you're going to go ahead and move on to the top screw hole and tighten that a little bit too. And then you're just going to go 
from the top to the bottom and then start screwing in holes making sure that you don't tighten them in all the way so you can position the radiator however you want it. Next up we have some cable management that needs to be done. So we're gonna go ahead and take the two fan headers that attach to the two fans pushing air through the radiator and go ahead and route those cables through the back. Next I'm gonna go ahead and take the CPU fan header and I'm going to use the optional fan header. I'm gonna go ahead and route that behind the 24 pin power connectors and around the ramp so it doesn't stick out at all and make it obvious that there are cables there. After that is positioned how I want it, I'm going to go ahead and take the Corsair link cable, plug that into the bottom, and route that up to where the 8 pin cable is, and tuck that underneath the heat spreader so it's out of the way. Now after that's done, I'm going to go ahead to the back of the case and route the Corsair Link cable so that I can plug it into the USB 2.0 header at the bottom of the case. Next, I'm going to connect the two fan headers and tuck that away. Now a problem I have with this is positioning the pump lines so that they will not interfere with the GPU and they will not stick out of the case which they are doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few velcro straps and I'm going to velcro the tubes together and I'm going to position them so that they will stay out of the way when I'm putting the glass cover back on. So I went ahead and took one and placed it where the lines are closest together. And I was able to keep that there long enough for me to be able to put the glass window back on. Now that everything is done and the cooler is installed, looking back at it now, the cooler looks fantastic. The temperatures in the system are great, the noise level is down, and I think the only downside I have to this cooler would be the stiffness of the tubing. Other than that, the cooler works for just about anything I throw at it and it's just all around a great product for overclocking your CPU. Hey guys, thanks for watching my installation of the H100i. Go ahead and leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you have any questions or videos you might want to see in the future. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next video.